Here then, we're going to use the rigging toolbox to create a full character rig to show how using the toolbox can expedite and simplify a great many of the tasks that we would do when manually setting up a character from scratch. Now we could get a mesh, add some bones and skeletons to it and work through all of that stuff, but that's just your normal sort of bone setup. Also, of course, if laying out the bones and skeleton for ourselves, then we could be very precise with it to make sure that we get things like perfectly plain our limbs to help the IK and stuff like that. But what we're going to do here is work with a slightly more imperfect character. And so to get a boned mesh quickly, I'm just going to grab a character from the Autodesk character generator here, which is free to use and very simple. Let's you customize simple biped meshes and of course export them with textures and skeleton. When you do so and you generate your character, you'll ideally want to use the generic FBX format here and of course use the Y up. You can use either the medium or the high resolution skeleton, but for this example, we're just gonna stick with the medium, which is helpful for most cases. So we get our FBX file here and we're gonna pop it open in Lightwave. We're going to import the rotations as baked and for this I'm going to use Lightwave joints because they're going to give us slightly better deformations and also allow us to use things like the automated distributed twist in certain places which we would have to set up extra stuff for if we wanted to use bones. So click continue and our scene will load. Okay, first thing that we have to do because this is a good old FBX import is it's a bit of a mess and so we want to just do a couple of bits of housekeeping to clean things up. All of these light snulls here, they can be gotten rid of, don't need them. We want to reparent the main hips bone here to take the whole skeleton beneath it and make that a child of the main character mesh here, which is the HDDS low res, that's the main character mesh there. We can then clear that remaining master reference and base bone transform stuff that we no longer need. And we've also got these other little pieces of mesh here for the teeth and the eyes and so on. We could go into each of these, go to their bones, into the properties and set them to use bones from the HDD low res. However, I'm just gonna pop into Modeler here and grab each of these objects there and cut them out and progressively just paste them across to all of the other objects so that I can drop them all into the actual main mesh itself. With that saved off, then back in layout, I can of course get rid of what are now these empty objects there. And that leaves me with just the single layer mesh with all of the bone items skeleton there underneath it. We can initially, of course, the skinning is still a bit off, so we can select all of the bones and rest them there, which we see fixes up the skinning like this. We also take a little peek if we grab one of the joints and start rotating it. We can see that the weights appear messed up. Again, this is just the FBX weighting as it comes in. So we just want to grab one of the deformer parts of the joint there. Let me lock the mesh so as I don't keep selecting it. Select all of the bones there, making sure I get one that's actually got weight set. I'm going to turn off the weight normalization and the use weight map only option. And we can see that there we are, there's our skeleton in our mesh deforming just as we would require it to, smashing. We can also see that there are these additional joints at the ends of things that we don't really need, like the head end two here and the toe end two joints there. We can get rid of all of these guys. We can see that we have the same for the fingers there. They've got these second nub or end joints which aren't needed. So get rid of all that stuff and there we've got a nice clean skeleton for our mesh. So it's time to start rigging. So let's get the rigging toolbox open and ready for us here. And the first thing to notice, of course, is that since we're going to want to be applying IK and so on to these joints, is that their orientations are often a little bit of a mess. And so we want to clear all of that up. What I'm gonna do is select all of the joints here, bring up their properties and just convert them over to z-axis for a moment and of course we can see the common problem that you have with fbx import is that the bones are actually all oriented in these strange rotations like this so what we're going to use is the orient hierarchy tool here which of course aligns bones so that they all point in a nice continuous line parent to child 
But just before we do that, there's one fix that I want to make, and I'm going to go back to joints mode for a second, so as we can see this, and that of course is the eyes here. We do want the eyes to be pointing straight forwards, and if I orient them as they are, then they're going to be oriented down this way, which of course is wrong. So I'm just going to grab the second eye joints there and snap them to the same position as the first eye joint. Then I can just come out in side view and move them straight ahead like this. So as those are going to pick up the orientation correctly for us. So once again, select all of the joints there, just throw them into Z bones mode so that I can see their orientations a bit more clearly. And let's hit orient hierarchy. For some FBX skeletons that you get, you'll find that the bank twist is well set for you, so you would often orient the bank to current. You can also try auto sometimes, but generally with these character generator characters, zero works out to be the best. Of course, orient hierarchy you can rerun, so you can try out the different ones and see which one works best on a given skeleton. But here we're going to have zero, so click OK. And we see that whilst our mesh is a bit of a mangle, our entire skeleton has been nicely and properly oriented. So we can just rest that, throw it all back to joints, and have a look at some of our orientations. And we see that we've got out of gimbal lock on the hip joint there. We've got these nice square orientations available for us at our ball joints and so on like that. So it's all looking pretty good. Right then, time to make a start on actually setting up the rigging into this gal. So we'll start with some IK legs here. So I'm going to select the left leg, hip, knee and ankle. Come over to the Make IK tool and let's have a look. Right, it's going to be on pitch rotation here. If I come to the Move tool and switch to Local Axis, then of course we can see that the local Y here is pointing forward and that's where I'm going to want the pole item to go. We're going to set up just regular pole and goal style IK here. So we set our options here. I want pitch. I'm using regular planar IK with a pole item. Pole items going on the positive Y. I'm going to use the MGO in drag mode. I'm going to create null items and of course I'm going to name this chain left leg like this. Make IK chain. Let's have a look here. There we go. IK is all working there. Just wonderful. Grab the pole item. Now we've got our pole action going on. Superb. We can do the other leg then. Exactly the same. We see that the orientation there is positive Y for where the pole is going to go. Of course, we can see that again it's in pitch. So basically the exact same settings. Set this to right leg and make IK chain. And again, we can lift that up and see that that is all working just nicely there. We can see, if we look real, real close, that there is, when we are moving our pole, a little bit of a drift on the foot at the end there. And I don't mean the deformation fall off, I mean the actual positioning and orientation of this bone, this joint. The reason for that is, of course, because we've gone for planar IK, and to get that working perfectly, you do need a perfectly planar chain of bones or joints or what have you. One of the problems that you'll sometimes get in an imported skeleton like this, or if you've tried arranging skeletons in Modeler or whatnot, is it can be hard to get them in a perfect line. We see this is even more problematic here on the arm. Look at the, look at the kink in that. And so even though these legs look straight, there is a tiny mismatch of perfect planarity either in their position relative to one another or the exact crossover of their rotations. This is easily fixed. We go to the top joint of each leg there, the hip joint. I'm going to turn on heading and pitch and set both of those to inverse kinematics like that without, of course, affecting any of the rest of the chain. And now we see that when the pole is thrown, the foot is absolutely solid locked. So we've been able to exploit the extra channel just at the very top point there to help make that nice and steady. This setup is, however, of course, very simple. We've just got this, you know, one single goal item there that, you know, moves our foot and poses our leg. So let's go and add in just a simple little reverse foot system so we can get a bit more control. I'm gonna add a null. I'm just gonna call this left leg IK, which of course it's a different name to the actual IK goal itself there. 
I'm going to first get this null and snap it to the ankle position there so it is when viewed from the front in line with the foot here and then I'm just going to pull it down to the heel contact position which is right around there. Find this I'm just going to make a clone of it rename the clone of course to right leg IK and position it appropriately there at the right heel position. I'm going to take both of these guys and just put them under the IK controls master null there just for ease. Give them some colour there and I'm also going to give them a shape. We'll go for a ring which we're going to want to be on the Y axis and let's shrink them down some there like that. Perhaps a little bit smaller and I'm also going to make them filled just so as they sort of have that visual reminder that they are meant to be the top level IK goal. Now for my reverse foot bits I'm going to add a null. I'll call this left leg football. I'm going to snap this here to the position of the toe rotation joint right there. Again a little shape this time on its x-axis like that. You can also be a bit smaller. I'm going to add another null which I'll call the left leg toe tip. Snap this guy to the position of the toe end joint just there. Small size, I'm going to make that just a little ball. Give those fellas some colour. And now I just need to parent up the hierarchy. So the left leg toe tip becomes an immediate child of the main left leg IK here. The left leg foot ball becomes a child of the toe tip. Then the left leg IK goal will become a child of the foot ball. What we see this gives us of course is this main IK goal there which we can move and pose around. We can of course rotate it here from the heel point. We can lift the whole foot up there on the tiptoe like this as well as of course turning the foot right around from the tiptoe point like that. And we can grab the foot ball and raise the foot this way. The last thing we need to take care of is the action on the toe joint itself. So I'm going to select the actual toe joint point there, store assign E, come to the tiptoe null and click target. Now of course when we do the ball lift the toe stays nice and flat like this for us. And since we only require the pitch channel there I'm going to turn the heading and bank off. And so there we have that nice handy pretty functional little IK setup on our leg. We just need of course to replicate that on the right hand side. So there we go, the same system replicated on the right side there as if by magic. Let's take a quick look at one tiny little error that we are getting at the minute. Um, I'll just grab IK goal here and I'm just going to zoom in and lift it. You see there's a bit of drag, a bit of delay. The ankle isn't quite meeting with the IK goal immediately. It has to come up a little bit before it will do. This isn't anything that we've done wrong so far. This is simply the fact, of course, that Lightwave's IK needs a pre-bend in order to work properly. And there is a tiny amount of pre-bend in this limb, but it is tiny. So what we're going to do to fix that is just grab both of the knee joints here, temporarily turn off MC and IK, and we're just going to tip them back a bit like that to add in some additional pre-bend. Turn the MC and the IK back on, and we'll now see that when we move this ankle null, there we go, we're getting a much more solid match. That's really all that that is down to. It's just the amount of pre-bend that is currently present in this limb. And if it's still a bit weak, we can make it a bit stronger just by adding a little bit more there. Turn that all back on. Rotate perhaps the football. There we see nice, solid, locked IK. So with our legs all completely finished, Let's move on to another area and we'll do the arms. Of course, very often for many characters, you wouldn't really need IK arms. The majority of the time you use arms in FK mode. And we certainly could do that here, just leave them as FK arms, done. But just to demonstrate that again, we can fix these things up despite the, you know, kink that we've got going on in the supplied bone skeleton here. We're just going to put them into IK. So I'll grab the three joints here, shoulder, elbow and wrist. 
have a look at the axes we're wanting to use. So again, here it is pitch only that I want for the IK. And if I take a look at the local translate, then we see that the Y is sticking forward here. So I'm going to want the pole to be off the back side of the arm. So switch that to negative Y. We'll give this the name, of course, of the left arm. Same otherwise options, planar, pole, drag style, and let's make IK chain. Everything throws out there, goes a little wild. Again, that's just our skinning. We'll look at that in a moment for the minute. Let's just take a look at the actual IK operation. We can see that it's not quite matching up with the goal item there at all. Again, that is down to this bad kink that we've got going on in the limb. So we take this topmost item here, the shoulder, get both its heading and pitch, and we'll set those to inverse kinematics. And bingo, now we're getting proper alignment with our goal like that. And our arm is working nicely. We've got, of course, the MGO to the goal there. Of course, when the goal goes out of bounds, we get the hand dragging down to point toward it. And of course, we've got the pole item there controlling the point of the elbow, which is super. So let's come back and look at our mesh again here. The out of whackness has been caused by the insertion of the IK plane item here, which of course was done automatically by the Make IK tool. Also, because this is a joints rig and we've got the connection there to the clavicle, this joint needs to, of course, be active so as it will take on the weight there. So I'm just going to reshow it and unlock it. Select the deformer portion there, rest it to rebind it to the mesh, and you'll see that that's thrown that back into proper positioning. I'm going to open its properties and we see that it has got the correct weight map assigned, but zero strength, so we just turn that up to 100. Now we can see that when we manipulate the clavicle there, that is all working as it should do. Our weighting here is still a bit out of whack, so I'm going to turn off the MC and the IK, which ensures that these bones are at their fixed FK positions. Just select all of the joints down that arm there and re-rest them. I can now turn the MC and the IK back on, and there we see that we've got our perfectly behaving IK arm like this. We're also going to take advantage of the joint system here. Let me just put on textured shaded wireframe so as we can see it there. And what I'm going to be looking at is the twist of the hand or twist of the wrist here. And to allow for that, I'm going to select the forearm deformer portion here, bring up the properties, turn on twist, set that to 100%. And there we go. We've now got, of course, a distributed twist deformation in the forearm there, which works just nicely. Of course, we replicate all of those actions here on the right side, again, as if by magic there, and we see that we get the right arm set up in exactly the same way. Of course, we have the clavicle action going on like this. So what else shall we do? Let's, I think, seeing as of course, we're using a lot of null controllers on this rig, add some extra ones around. First thing we'll look at is the actual hips controller here. And we'll see that whilst we could animate the hips bone itself, its orientation is unideal for our needs. What we would really like is to have our hips or main root controller in actual normal world aligned space. So I'm going to add a null here. I'm going to call this the hips root. I'm just going to snap it to the hips position there. We'll give it a shape, which will be a ring. I'm going to do that on the item's y-axis there. Give it a bit of size like this, and of course, some manner of color. There we go, and we see, of course, that we've got normal world-aligned orientations on that item. I will then select the hips bone here. Make sure both position and rotation are all turned on. Store to sign E, come to the hips null item here, and make constraint. Now, of course, we have this hips null item that controls our main hips there, or the root of the character, and we can move them around like this. Let's do a couple of others. We'll look at the spine here. Again, we've got these three spine joints, which we could operate individually. 
but for a simple character it can be just as well sometimes to have them all operating off a single control. So once again I'll add another null here. I'll just call this spine. Now let's move it into some sort of an appropriate spot. I like it behind the character. You could of course put it in the front or to the side. In fact let's put it to the front in this case shall we? Give it a little shape there. Also some kind of colour. So we'll select all three spine joints here. Make sure that we're only operating on rotation. We'll do a store to sign E on those. Grab our control item here and make constraint. And we now see that we've got this constraint item there, which operates the spine. Of course, it's via these in-between nulls that we don't need to see. So of course, we can select those, hide and lock them. And there we go, fully operational single spine control that works like this. I think it would be nice if we had the same for the clavicle controls rather than having to operate those off of these joints here. So we're going to do a similar thing like this. So I'll grab the left shoulder joint here and of course make sure I have got the left shoulder joint not the IK plane joint there. I'm going to of course check that I'm just on rotation because that's all I'm interested in store to sign E and with the same item still selected I can hit make constraint do the same over here on the left there store to sign E and straight off make constraint and if we look in bounding box here are the two constraint nulls that have been created at those points you can move these guys out somewhere like this come back to my shaded and we see that each of these nulls is controlling the appropriate clavicle like that. So we can alter the shape on these fellas, little 50 millimeter ball maybe, maybe a little smaller, and just a little color. There we go, there's those. How about the head and neck? I think we can probably do that as well. So again, I'm going to add a null for this one. I'll just call this head. I'm going to position it here, just up a top above the head itself. Again, little shape, maybe a little bigger for this one, some color there. I'm going to select the neck joint and the head joint there. Again, rotation only, store to sign E, pick the head controller, make constraint. And there we go, there's our control for the head and neck, both working together there like that. Once again, I can take those guys, hide and lock them away. Let's just double check the parenting of these parts to see where they've come in. We can see, of course, that whilst the clavicle controls are parented into the main rig there, the head and, of course, the spine controls have not. So let's select these two like that. Store to sign E, and I'm just going to use the root null here and click parent. So now, of course, those come along with the root null borders. I also think that with these IK arms, I prefer generally not to have the pole items floating around in free space. I like them to come a little bit with the arms. Obviously, they can't be a child of the arm hierarchy itself since it is controlling them. But generally, I tend to make them children of the body. So I'm going to select both of my pole items there, store to sign E, choose this last spine joint and parent. Now, of course, when the spine is moving, the poles come along with, but they stay put when the clavicle or, of course, any part of the arm is in action. Last thing then, let's deal with these eyes, shall we? So I'm going to add a null. I'll call this left eye. Add another one, call it right eye. And a third null, which I'll call eyes main. Take both the left and the right eye, make them children of the eyes main here. Come to my side view, get the eyes main null here, just drag that up and snap it to the position of one of the eye joints like this, just so that it's level and in line, and then I'm going to push it out forwards to some position like this here, and of course center it back to zero on the X there. Now take my left eye null and snap that to the left eye position, my right eye null, snap that to the right eye position there. Take both of these and set their Z's back to zero like this. We'll give these some little shapes. So I'm going to put a small ring onto each of these side 
inoles like this for the left and right. I'm going to put a ring actually as well onto the main inole here, which I'll make somewhat larger like that. Spot of colour just as we can see them. Then I'll take the left eye joint here, store the sign E, pick the left eye, target, take the right eye joint, store the sign E, right eye controller and target. I'll just grab and re-rest those joints running into the eyes because that targeting sort of pushed their orientations off a little bit, which is fine, but we re-rest them as that. And there we see that we've got our eye action going on to this targeting null. Of course, we can turn the head and the eyes will continue to target there. Even more so, of course, we can turn any part of the rig right from the root and the eyes will continue to look at it. It is a world space eye controller. Perhaps that's what we want, perhaps it's not. Obviously, if we wanted it to be local to the head, then we could parent the eyes main to the actual head joint here. We could perhaps parent it to the root or one of the spine joints. Then the eyes would come along with the main body, but as the head turned, the eyes would stay pointing in the same direction. It can be a tricky one with eyes because sometimes you want them to be local to the head, sometimes you want them to be local to the world. As such, what I feel I'm going to do here is set up a blend. So with the eyes main controller selected, I will make sure that I've got position and rotation enabled. I will store the sign E and with the same item still selected, click make blended. This of course creates this null here, which the eyes will snap to when the blend switch is on like this. So what I can do is to take that fella I'm just going to give it a different shape here. Give it a ring the same. I'll bring that down to something smaller like this. And of course, give it a different color so as it stands out somewhat. I'm then going to have this fella selected, store the sign E, come to the head joint, click parent. I can now take my switch control. I'll make that a little bit smaller, something like that. Move it in close to the eye system or put it in the middle of the eye system, one or the other, somewhere around there. And what we see we now have is a system where we've got an eye that is ordinarily in world space, so we can manipulate the character and their eyes will continue pointing towards that item. But when we throw the switch, the eyes will become constrained to this little pink ring. And of course, the eyes are now locally following the head. So we've got a space switchable eye control set up there. And that pretty much takes care of everything. The eyes main, I can either leave out at the top of the scene here, or I can just dump it under the IK controls, which seems like a good place for it. Got my hips root there. Got all of my IK controls set up there. Of course, have all of the bones, which I really don't need to see. I could lock and hide them, but I'll just turn off the bone x-ray. And there we have it. Our character is all set up and operational. Because of the way that the IK has set itself up, I could select some of the arm joints here or any of the arm joints that are part of the IK chain, come over to the motion options and throw Lightwave's native IKFK blending. So even though I have set up IK on the arms, I can get them operating in FK mode with a little IKFK switch there, if I so desire. Otherwise, whichever controls I'm using, I'm free to go round now, manipulating and posing my character, just like this. Putting on whichever kind of pose that I want to have my character going into here. So something like that, put the leg there. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll move this one, turn it out a bit, push it like that. Have something like this going on there. So there we have it. Fast, efficient rigging of a character using the rigging toolbox. We basically haven't had to go into motion options once. Everything has been simple, straightforward, and has left us with a decent set of controls for posing and animating our character.